All right, everyone, this is just a, a demonstration of the Blend Me Blender add-on in the Windows environment. And um, this is just to show that it is an actual cross-platform GUI for OpenFoam, uh, Radiance Energy Plus, and the like for building simulation and modeling. Um, now, you have to apologize. You can see that here I'm in um, Windows Vista. Now, um, I, I really am going to try not to rant too much about the failings of Windows in this demonstration. Um, the interface is terrible. The video is jumpy. Um, but there's not much I can do about it. And I've, I've just waited one and a half hours for my computer to load up and actually get stable. Um, so Windows, just nothing really seems to work. Everything takes a little bit longer, everything's a little bit slower, and it's just the way it is. I mean, I mean if you want to do real um, high-performance computing, you're best off actually using a proper platform for it, like a Linux system. But um, that said, um, it just beggars belief how many people actually use this um, absolutely god-awful product. So um, w what uh, w it's important that something is cross-platform, so you can share with colleagues and peer reviewers and whatnot. So. Um, I can actually load up a blend file that was created on the Linux system. This is actually one from a previous tutorial. And all the, uh, the systems already set up now that this video is so jumpy, I didn't want to spend a lot of time um, redrawing a new model. So I've just opened up an old one. But this could have been sent from anywhere. It could have been colleagues sharing. So we start up the, um, the add-on. You can see I've got problems in our windows with the Intel drivers um, and whatnot. And we start up the CFD module. In order to fix all this, um, we just have to minimize it and sort of refresh the window. Um, so like I said, nothing really works very well. Now if we select something um, and uh, look on the object menu, you can see the menus have come back exactly where I left them on the other platform in Linux. The mesh levels and all the boundary conditions are set and left exactly as they were. So it's great for peer reviewing. It's great. This is, this is freely available, open for everyone to be able to um, use and view the, the settings that you've, you've you know, used. Um, so you can send these files to anywhere, anyone around the world, and as long as they've got um, Blender, then they should be able to sort of load it up and, and look at it. Um, so we go to the, um, we're just going to run through setting up the, the CFD case. Now, th this is, computer's already struggling enough um, with um, parallel, but you can see all the defaults are set. So um, we could run in parallel if we wanted to. But just like in, um, in Windows, if I open up the um, system console here, um, we just have to, just like in Linux, we have to source foam still. Um, we then le we'll leave all the defaults as set and everything's set from before. So then we'll actually write the case files. Okay. Um, then we run block mesh. And um, you can see it takes a while for it to load up. Um, so um, this is because of uh, the compiler optimization set when compiling, cross-compiling. Um, and Windows just takes a while to load the DLLs for the first time. But in su subsequent runs, it does does speed up. So that's just made the block mesh. Then we can run the uh, snappy hex mesh. Again, it's taking a while. Just while we're waiting for that to go on, um, if we go back to this um, MPI settings, you can see actually um, all the defaults for all the MPI options have been changed when you load them up in Windows. So um, depending upon which platform you load, load this, these up in, um, you'll get different uh, defaults, which is, which is quite a nice feature. Um, and these are all set up ready to go so that in Windows you can literally just change the number of processes here and localhost um, to two or three or four, however you want, and you're ready to go. Okay. So we're at the last stage of meshing now, and that should be nearly done. Um, now, I don't want to, this is just a little demo, so I don't want to run it for a very long time. So we'll just run it for 10 iterations, and we're using simple foam, um, and uh, stop it at the end of the time. Um, runtime modification still works in, in Windows, which is great. So you can actually um, stop a simulation as it goes. And then we can press run case. Um, yeah, so like I said, runtime modification works. If, if I wanted to stop this at, at five or whatever, then I could just go um, next right or um, right now and right control dict and it would stop the simulation. That's the best way to, to end the uh, foam simulation when it's running on a sub-process rather than killing it. Um, so you can see here, um, it's running through, just doing the calculation. Okay, so there it's getting to step number five. 
Um, again, um, if you go into the raw open foam commands, you can, um, it's writing the log files out to the case folder, and you can uh, foam log to, to, to plot the residuals over time. Okay, so now um, the post processing, um, we don't launch directly from Blender when we, we're using uh, Windows. Where it's actually better just to actually use the PowerView application that we have here. And we go to um, wherever the file was, the foam case folder was made. We open up the case.foam file. And if we set time to 10 and bring in the whole mesh, um, then there we are. There's our, our mesh. If we look at it with wireframe, you can see that's the mesh that we used. Um, if we just want to do some simple post-processing, we can create a plane in Z-normal at a height of 1.4, which should go right the way through the center of our um, building. And then we can apply some glyphs to that. And what I might just do is turn the scaling off and apply that. And I'll view them by their velocity vectors. There we go. So that gives the flow in and through the zone. Takes a while to render. There we are. So that's a demonstration of um, cross-platform GUI for um, OpenFoam, which is the uh, Blend Me add-on for Blender. All right, thanks for listening. Uh,